My Hunt and Phil Penny album is coming along very nicely. As a matter of fact, we've hunted 211 boxes and we have found through just coin roll hunting 205 of the 234 cents that this book holds. Now this book holds all the pennies from 1909 through 1999. There are some findable cents in here, like the 1909 No VDB, the 1911, and the 1912. Those are the most minted coins that we still can find. And then, of course, one could argue that we could find a lot of the other less common but findable cents because I have found other ones in my previous hunts throughout the several years I've been hunting coins. That being said, this is going to be episode number 115, and we have boxes 212 and 213 to hunt in our quest to slot another scent. Hey everyone, it's Rob Finds Treasure. Welcome back to my channel. We have another two box penny hunt and filled episode for you. Of course, I've already said it's episode 115. Our mission is to find a scent, or if we can't find one to add to the book, let's see if we can get an upgrade or two. I have two local Dallas-Fort Worth boxes in front of me. Both of these are circulated boxes, I can tell, because they have the holes in the bottom. So I definitely know I have a two-box hunt or 100 rolls to search through. Now, you guys can take a peek at the entire playlist if you want to start from the very beginning, because I have that playlist linked both down below in the video description as well as pinned up here. But for now, we're just going to slide the book out of the way and get right to the hunt. Let's see if I can open this box one-handed, because I've been struggling lately, and that went great. All right, looks like we do have some copper scents, but I've been pulling out all the copper in my area since day one. Anyway, looks like a pretty good box. We'll have to see what's inside. Now, I get mostly Denver minted coins, so even though I'll be looking for some of the varieties, it's really unlikely if I'll have any, but of course, we'll keep our eyes peeled for them. I'll be back with my first wheat scent find or variety find if we're so lucky. We're on roll number two, and we have our first wheat scent for the board. It's just going to be a 1957D, but it's an early start, and that's good with me. We're on roll number four, and we found one more. Wheat scent number two is a 1952 from Denver. We're on roll number five, and I see an old wheat scent, and I think it has a mint mark. Wheat scent number three is going to be a 1918D. Let's just make sure that is that for sure, and it is. I don't think that that's going to be nice enough to upgrade the book, but it definitely has some decent detail, and if I were to wipe it down a little bit, maybe it'd look better. Either way, a teen's wheat scent in the box, and this box rocks so far. Rule number 13, and we've got another score, because we just found wheat scent number four. 1958 Denver is a last year wheat scent. Roll number 17, and we have found a Canadian scent with the Queen. This is going to be a Laureate portrait or a young head, so it's going to be 1964 or earlier. And it's going to be 1964, first foreign score of the box. Well, we're on roll number 30, and this box has definitely slowed down when I wish it would stay and drive. Luckily, we have found wheat scent number 5, a 1951 Denver this time. Same roll, and take a look at this. We have found wheat scent number six. And that's going to be a 50-something. Let's put it under a scope. It could be another 51. And it is, but this time, San Francisco minted. Six wheat scents on the board through 30 rolls. We're now on roll number 32, and it's pretty easy to see that the seventh wheat scent is a 58D. Same roll, which has been pretty great. Looks like we found wheat scent number eight, a 1946 Philadelphia. We're on roll 34, and the next wheat scent looks like it has an old reverse. That could be a good sign. Let's flip it around and take a look at wheat scent number nine. It's not that old. It's a 1940D, but we'll take it. We're on roll number 36, and we found one again. Take a look at wheat scent number 10. That looks pretty good. Probably in the 50s, though. And it is. A really nice 1957 Denver. We're on roll number 40. This box has been a lot of fun. Unfortunately, the 11th wheat scent is another from 1951. 51 Denver. Third from that year. Roll number 46. 
And it's easy to see ya. 1956, Philadelphia. That was bad. We sent number 12. Well, we finished that first penny box, and you know what? It was a really good box. We have 12 wheat cents on the board, including one pre-1940, and actually pre-1920, a 1918 Denver. We ended with three Canadians, four 59s, one pretty nice 1966. I did check it to see if it was the DDO. It's not, and two 69 S's. On top of that, we did score ourselves two and a half pounds of copper, or two pounds, eight ounces in that jar. Box one is done. We do have a two box hunt, so let's slide this one over and go ahead and crack into it and see if we can continue this wheat scent score with maybe another dozen to get to 25. We'll have to see. All right, got it popped. I do see some good amount of copper yet again. I don't see any wheat scents staring back at me, but we got to get into the rolls to see if we have more finds. I'll bring you guys back in in a little bit and we might have a damaged scent there. We'll have to see what that one is. I'll be back in just a second. Well, this 1980 copper scent definitely had a tough time. I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the cup and I'll be back when I have another find. We're on roll number 63 of the two box hunt and it has been seen. This'll make wheat scent number 13. And that's gonna be a 1950 San Francisco. Roll number 67 and guess what it's gonna be? It's gonna be our 14th Weedy, 1953 Denver. Well, the finds in this box have been few and far between, but somehow we've made it to a wheat scent 15, a 1944 Philadelphia. I grabbed rule number 85 and placed it on the mat, and it looks like there's something in the back that's jumping a fence. And I took a closer look, and it's another wheat scent. This one is a 1944 San Francisco. Well, we're on roll number 90 and this is only the fifth of its kind in this box that we have seen. Yep, I'm talking about Wheat Scent 17. 1950 San Francisco. Roll number 92 and I'm not hating. I can't get mad at Wheat Scent number 18. 1956 Denver. Well, we're on roll number 97 and I'm not gonna complain because Technically, we have found plenty, especially finding wheat scent number 19, which puts us one away from 20. Wheat scent number 19, and that's going to be a 1944 Denver, so we can check it for that 44D over S, which it is not. 1944 Denver, 19 wheat cents on the board. Well, we didn't make it to 20 wheat cents after two boxes, so definitely a lighter second box. We had 12 wheat cents in the first box, seven in the second. It would be nice to get to eight, but what are you going to do? 19 still a good number. Nothing really fancy spancy on the board. The 18D, I went ahead and wiped it down a little bit, hoping that it upgrades. We'll have to see. It may not. We got five Canadian cents. We got 1159s. Two nice copper cents, one's a 66 and one's a 71 Denver, and then three 1969 S's. Speaking of copper, we did make it over five pounds. That's a total of five pounds and two ounces in that cup, and I'll take it. Only thing left to do now is compare the finds to the book to see if we possibly have any upgrades or additions. Let me go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back in just a second with a look at the book and some final thoughts on the hunt. Well, I've compared the finds to the album, and luckily we did have an upgrade. This was the 1918 Denver that was in there. You can see it's pretty corroded. It's also really brown and chewed up. And the one we found today, while it's not super nice, it's still nicer and I'll take it. So we did have one upgrade. Unfortunately, no additions yet again. Now after 213 boxes hunted, we're stuck at 205 out of 234 cents. I'll go ahead and say really quickly, I know I had a lot of fun with this hunt doing all those rhymes. If it bothered you, I'm sorry. Just let me know in the comments down below what you thought about that. I won't do it in very many hunts, but I just felt like doing it today for fun. Hopefully, despite the lack of additions and all the rhymes, you still had fun watching this two-box hunt. If you did, I'd appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting, and thanks for watching.